Do you get sharp shooting pain in your upper back or your shoulders? Have you been told that you have muscle knots or maybe a trigger point or something scary like myofascial pain syndrome? In my experience, most of these pain conditions, these muscle hypersensitivities, even though they feel really serious, usually they're not. And very often you can take care of them quickly at home. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher, a teacher trainer. I myself have had a recurring issue in my middle traps in my rhomboid area where I get one of these hypersensitive trigger points that kind of takes my right arm offline. I'll be doing a half push up or a chaturanga and my arm will collapse. It feels really scary, but it's usually not. All on its own, it usually clears up within about a week. But over the years, I've learned some stretches some strengthening and self-massage techniques that can help this to clear up faster, and I think it can help to prevent it in the future as well. In this video, here's what we'll talk about. The anatomy of your upper back and shoulders, we'll look at the muscles. Number two, we'll look at why atrophy, lack of use, and stress are probably the causes of this pain. And most importantly, we'll look at some stretches, some strengthening practices, and then some self-massage techniques to get rid of that pain now. Quick disclaimer here, if you have a neck problem, not a muscle problem, this video is not for you. If you have radiating nerve pain, please go see a doctor. And in all cases, remember, this is for educational purposes only. If you'd like to skip forward to the exercises, you'll find a PDF link down below in the description. Let's talk about the anatomy of your upper back and shoulders. If you were to spin around, there's a diamond shaped group of muscles on your back called your trapezius muscles, your upper traps, your middle traps, and your lower traps. Working along with your trapezius muscles are your rhomboids and then your levator scapula. And these muscles together, they do things like elevating your shoulder blades, shrugging, unshrugging your shoulder blades, scapular retraction, pulling, rowing, hanging, all of that sounds great, except here's the problem. Almost none of us do dips. Almost none of us row and pull and hang. So over time, what happens is most of us get atrophied muscles. That means very, very weak muscles from lack of use. Now couple that with stress. Many of us have weak atrophied upper back and shoulder muscles combined with the fact that when we're working and we're taking calls and we get stressed, we manifest that stress physically very often in our upper back and shoulders. So we have weak muscles that are hypertense. That makes them very, very prone to these hypersensitive areas. What exactly is going on? Well, again, people will use terms like muscle knots. People will use terms like trigger points. They'll use terms like uh, myofascial pain syndrome. But usually in most cases, we have these contractile units in our muscles called sarcomeres, and they get stuck in a contracted state. In the same way you can get stuck in a hyper anxious state, those muscles can often become hyper tense as well. And that's the bad news. The good news is it's relatively easy in most cases to relieve it and in some cases even prevent it. When we think about these muscles, it's really important to remember that number one, we need to stretch. We need to take our upper body, our arms and our shoulders through their full range of motion, which we almost never do. Number two, we need to strengthen. And lastly, we'll do some self massage techniques. So if you're suffering from pain right now, hopefully you can get some relief. Let's take a look. The first pose we'll work with is called windshield wipers. We'll take our top arm into full shoulder flexion. The only trick here is spread your fingers and outward rotate, laterally rotate your arm. So your fingers twist and your bottom arm, your shoulder moves into extension and then hyper extension. I'd like you to immediately rotate. So we corkscrew our arms and then we switch and we corkscrew our arms. So again, the top arm rotates to the outside, your bottom arm rotates to the inside and you should get a really long pull of energy. We'll inhale through our nose, we'll exhale through our mouth, and then we'll switch sides. Let's do it together. Plant your feet, right arms up first. Inhale, remember that rotation. And exhale. Good. Inhale. And exhale. We'll do two more. Inhale.
and exhale. Last one, remember that rotation, inhale. And exhale. Good, now release and shake it out. The next pose we'll work with is called swordfish and vampire. Essentially, we're protracting our scapula and then we'll retract our scapula. When we protract, you turn your hands to face each other, straighten your arm and separate your shoulder blades as much as you can, drop your head. When we retract our scapula, imagine that you're gripping a tennis ball with your hands and squeeze your shoulders behind your back. So this is the vampire, this is the swordfish. We'll do four rounds together. We'll inhale to the swordfish, Exhale to the vampire. Let's try it together. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Inhale, nose. Exhale, mouth. One more time. Inhale, nose. And exhale, mouth. Good. Shake it out. Next, we'll do a pose called the side shrug. Here's how it works. With your right hand back behind you, grab hold of your left wrist, straighten your left arm. We'll shrug our right ear towards our right shoulder as we inhale. And exhale. Switch sides. We inhale and exhale. Good. And inhale and exhale. Last one, we inhale and exhale. Good. Release your head, release your arms and shake it out. For our final mobilization stretching exercise, we'll do one called the arrow and then the slouch. When you're doing arrow pose, you interlace your hands. Try to keep your waist right over your ankles, but puff your chest up and gently look up as you retract and squeeze your shoulder blades together. For the slouch, again, keep your waist right over your ankles and just drag your hands down towards your knees and drop your chin to your chest. Let's again inhale nose, exhale mouth, four rounds. Let's practice together. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, slouch. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Uh, final round. Inhale. Exhale. 
exhale. Good. Release your head, release your arms, and shake it out. Let's look at some strengthening exercises. The first strengthening pose we'll do are called scapular push-ups. Instead of pushing up by flexing our elbows, we'll instead protract and then retract our shoulder blades. At first it feels really weird and then hopefully it'll feel really good. It'll help you to both activate and release this upper back shoulder area. There's two versions. You can do it on your knees or you can do it in a normal push-up position. I'll do it first on my knees. I'll do a normal push-up. We'll toggle back and forth and I'll show you how it works. On your hands and knees like a child crawling, tuck your toes under. Your knees are under your hips, your hands are under your shoulders. Pause here. Great. And on the inhale, we'll puff up, 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 up. Spread your shoulder blades apart. And then exhale. Drop your heart down. Notice my arms stay straight. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, protraction. Exhale, retraction. Let's do two more. Inhale, protraction. Exhale, retraction. My heart melts. Inhale, protraction. Exhale, retraction. Sit back, shake it out, and relax. We'll do two more sets. I'll show you the next set, like a normal push-up, but still doing only scapular movements. With your gaze, make sure to look in front of your hands on the floor. Hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Feel free to do the knees version if that's more accessible for you. I'll step my feet back into a push-up position and I'll keep my gaze in front of me. I'll inhale, puff up towards the sky. I'll exhale, melt my heart down towards the floor. Inhale, puff up towards the sky. Exhale, melt my heart towards the floor. Notice my elbows are straight. Inhale, puff. Exhale, melt. Two more. Inhale, puff. Exhale, melt. One more time. Inhale, puff. And exhale, melt. Drop your knees down. Sit back and shake it out. Again, what we're looking to do is activate, strengthen those trapezius and our rhomboids, specifically our middle traps and our rhomboids. Let's try one more round together. Do either the knees down version or the push up version with me. But remember, these are just scapular push-ups. Hands are under your shoulders, stay on your knees with your toes tucked or kick your legs back as wide as your hips, gaze is in front of you. Inhale, puff up and exhale, melt your heart down. Inhale, puff up, exhale, melt towards the ground. Inhale, puff, exhale, melt. Inhale, puff up, exhale, melt and we'll do one more time inhale puff your heart and exhale melt your heart knees down sit back and shake it out the next exercise we'll do is called a high row to engage that pull motion exercise that we so often lack now i'm using an exercise band attached to this ceiling mount i'm certain you don't have a ceiling mount like this but what you can do is you can take a inexpensive exercise band like this and at home, close the band into a door. So if you hook the band over the top corner of your door and then close it, it works very, very well. I'll position myself with my feet wider than my hips and I'll brace down into my lower body. When I grab onto the band, I'll spread my hands wider than my shoulders to start. So I take a grip. Now I'll place my hands together. Brace down below and when I pull, I'll inhale and pull my hands back towards my ears and then I'll exhale and then I'll repeat the process. Let me walk and talk you through the first one. So I'll inhale as I pull my elbows out like wings and I'll exhale as I hold here through my mouth. Let's do four more together. So my arms are straight. And then I'll inhale. Hold here isometrically. Good. Again, we'll inhale. Hold here. A 
Let's do two more together. Good. Pull back towards your ears. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. We'll pull. Inhale. And exhale. release and shake it out. These are gentle corrective exercises. The final strength pose we'll do today is an active hang. Now I have a broomstick hanging from the ceiling here, but at home I usually use an open door and I hook my hands over the edge of the open door. That's what I'd suggest you do. We'll be doing 30 seconds with our feet for support. I'd like you to watch my engagement here. My hands go wider than my shoulders. I'll use my feet for support, but instead of passively hanging, I'll unshrug my shoulders just a little bit and I'll hold here with my trapezius muscles engaged. Let's practice together. We'll do a 30 second hold on the clock. So I hang and then I unshrug my shoulders and I hold actively here. Now you can see my toes are on the ground. If you wanted to, you could practice with your feet up off the ground, but don't push too hard, too fast. Better to start off gently. You can breathe here gently in and out through your nose, gripping on the bar, staying active as you hold here. Good, and then release down and shake it out. Let's now move into some self-massage techniques. When you have hypersensitive tissues in your upper back and shoulders, oftentimes the muscle fibers are contracting and not releasing. A little nervous system hack for this area specifically is to push and release. That might be a friend or a loved one using their elbow. That might be a body worker, but probably if you're like me, you don't have anyone who can do that on a daily basis, so it's helpful to do it yourself. We'll attempt to apply pressure to that over tense region so that it can relax works so, so well in this area of your body. A couple of different options, a tennis ball, a softball, a lacrosse ball, any kind of ball you might have around the house. Another option is a foam roller. Foam roller looks cooler. The ball tends to work better in terms of getting in there isolated. I'll show you on the right side with the ball. I'll show you on the left side with the roller. There's no wrong way to do this except too much. And there's a temptation to do too much. Err on the side of caution. Start off with just a minute or so each day and you can build up from there. If you spend many, many minutes, you can often make the problem worse. From here, I'll take my ball and I'll position it right underneath my scapula. So kind of in the middle of my shoulder blade, pressing into my traps and very, very quickly, I get an intense sensation. I'll use my left foot flat on the floor, my right leg will stay extended, and I can from here do a circular motion. So I'll often go clockwise, two, three, four, and then I'll go counterclockwise, four, three, two, one. From here, I can move a little bit further down my back and I'll go clockwise, one, two, three, four, and now counterclockwise, four, three, two, one. The ball can work really, really well for finding that targeted area. Just don't be masochistic about it. Let me show you now with the roller on the left side. This is not quite as targeted, but it is gentler. So if you find that ball is just too intense, foam roller is definitely a gentler, but less targeted way to approach it. I'll position the roller just off to my side in general. Same thing, my one leg stays straight, my right leg is bent. And I'll use my leg to lift up and I'll roll one, two, three, four, and now I'll go a little lower, four, three, two, and one. When you first get experimenting with self-massage, resist the temptation to do too much, err on the side of just one minute per side to get started, and see if that helps. I hope you found this video helpful. My suggestion would be, if you're struggling with a problem with a trigger point, hypersensitive muscle area, Go through this routine, it takes about 10 minutes. You can do it every single day, but just be really, really gentle. If you found this video helpful, please click subscribe down below. I have more science-based videos every week. If you have a question, comment, feedback, love to hear from you down below. 
You can find a PDF guide to all the exercise we've covered in the description below. Lastly, please find my teaching calendar, my upcoming courses, and travel schedule at yogabody.com. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll see you in the next video.